Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful bouquet piece. We are going to do this by combining some simple techniques and creative ideas. Believe me, it's a lot easier than it looks. Let me show you how I did it. And an episode away from home. My makeshift table and we are going to be using 30 by 30 canvas. I'm trying to use everything available because I don't have my own equipment here, so I'm not even throwing away this. I'm going to mix my paint on the plastic. I bought two palette knives in a nearby art shop, shapes that I don't actually have, so we're going to try them today. I also found these two. I do like this canvas. First, titanium white. Because I don't have any big brushes, I'm only going to use palette knives for the background, so it's going to be a bit more textured. I picked some colors just for the beginning, but as usual, I'm going to play and see which ones I like while I'm mixing them with white. So we've got phthalo blue. I would like some blue hint and a selection of browns and yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt amber, and a color I have never used before, raw amber. I'm very intrigued. Write those dots. That was yellow ochre, pretty similar, raw sienna. Shall we use this rusty tool? Let's see what happens. Whoa. Oh, interesting colors. I definitely want them a bit more muted, but quite liking a little bit of green with a mix of sienna and blue. Now you're blending in the colors. As I said, I do want them lighter, especially towards the edges. I want my bouquet to be obviously somewhere in the middle and this section is going to be dark. I really enjoy mixing colors for the background, it's so much fun. I spread the colors with this and I quite like it. This is me planning the background for my flowers. Very intuitive process, there's no really right or wrong here. The combination of blue and yellow ochre is my green alternative because I don't really want to make it green. As usual, one side in my imagination is going to be lighter than the other, so this is the lighter part. You probably think, oh, that's just so ugly. At the moment, I agree. It's not the most appealing. Thinking of vase now, and how big do we want it? I want quite a wide one. Oh, like, like that. So if this is the vase, we need some kind of table. That means that these colors should probably go this way. My imaginary table. Just for now, like that. And come back and fix it later, but at the moment it helps me think. Can we imagine the vase? Yes, we can now. I've decided to introduce phthalo green, the smallest amount possible to make the blue more turquoisey. A little bit of this color peeping through. Again, darker here, lighter towards the edges. I hope you can kind of see what I'm planning and let me just really roughly put some color on the vase. Of course, it's not going to look like this just so that you know where the vase is and it is going to be blue if i touch this area with a bit of lighter color i can separate my table from the rest yes i know i went over here but it's fine we'll be adding darker colors onto the table but at the moment it will definitely have a kind of a partition don't we? I do want my flowers to be, some of them to be quite round, therefore I might use this palette knife for the shadows and a bit of black as well. I think we need darker area here. Would you believe that I brought all-purpose filler all the way? 
with me. I am checking whether it survived because I want my flowers much thicker than the regular paint. I could use some texture paste. I'm sure there are plenty of other texture paste that would be very good, but I like this. It looks soft. That's good news. Now, what colors do I want? I want white flowers. I want turquoise flowers, maybe gold. Let's just start with turquoise. I also bought another palette knife in case this one is too small. I probably don't need that much. I can always make more. I would like my flowers probably darker and lighter. Bit of phthalo green, bit of phthalo blue. Let's mix it. So I'm going to separate some of it for the white. This is really dark. I wasn't measuring anything. I just made sure that it's not too runny or too thick. So we've got this kind of consistency. It doesn't fall off quite thick. It'll give us some impression of some petals. Bigger, smaller, it's all right. Or even whole flowers. I do like turning because then I can reach Four petals or five petals, I don't think it matters. See, now the colourful background serves us as some imaginary flowers or petals behind. This is the second palette knife painting in the series. I started with Forget-Me-Nots, but I did the other painting on a wooden panel. Time for the lighter paste. The light ones look really good here on the dark background, don't they? Some creamy colour. Not sure if they are the same flowers or different, maybe. A bit of gold as well. But I'm not trying to create any blossoms with these now. I'm waiting for the flowers to dry. Colour to the vase. I want it blue and brown. I'm going to mix my turquoise but make it darker with some black perhaps. Okay, let's make it dark and then I'll add some highlights. Let's let's make it that deep. Tape will help me shape it. Moving up like this and making it slightly curved. I'm a bit worried it's a bit wonky. Mm. I want it darker here. Final touch on the vase. I did want some very, very light section. I think our bouquet would benefit from adding some darker colors, so that's what I'm doing. That's the leftover color from the vase, and I think it's going to look really nice. I want a little bit of this dark green in various places, but I don't want to really draw any more petals. I'm thinking. Maybe I make a little bit of a splatter. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> That's going to be too much. Okay. I think I will leave it to dry because I'll come back with white. At the moment, I am leaving it as it is, um, so I think. But then I'll probably uh, splatter some beige colour, maybe, or light blue. A couple of lighter splashes. A little bit of gold for some flowers. And the final stage for the flowers, I'm going to mix something really light. Not sure if I want it pure white or cream, but I want quite a lot of much, much lighter blossoms. Hint, I mean a tiny, tiny amount. Oh, that's the tiny amount. It's actually pretty visible. I can't overemphasize how much fun it is just Touching the canvas with the tip of a palette knife is so, so satisfying. Let's try the pure white now.
I know there's a big gap here, which I was intending to fill with the white ones, and I think that's fine. They're going to be the main focal point. I'm going to make some white splatter, I think. Oops, that's really small. Adding some highlights to my glass vase. And now a couple of highlights on the darkest flowers. This is not pure white now, it's lighter blue. I think it creates a little bit more depth, but of course it's optional. If I don't touch every single flower, that's all right. And now a little bit of shadow, some shadows. I think those little touches really make some difference. I've got this little bit of grey here, so I'm going to add my shadow. I believe it should be on this side. My right side should be darker than the left hand side. No gold. I could use the tip of the brush, but I found a pin. Maybe this will be useful. Loading quite a lot. So thick. The mid parts are actually standing. Now, the dark background, when I was using browns and dark colors, actually paid off now because I don't have to go around the flowers and create some depth. We already have it, so that was very useful. I think this is the time for adding gold leaf. So this is the gilding paste. I'm going to apply some of it to the center of the flowers. Well, some of them, not all of them. Like this, small amount. If it's too much, you know, we don't have to apply it there. And also there's an option of scraping it off, which that's what I often do actually. The guessing game begins. Where did I put them? Yes. No, <laughs> I think so. I personally prefer ripping smaller pieces. I don't like wasting too much. Okay, so I will keep applying. Now let's brush it off. Need a soft brush and gently remove the residue. Well, there we are. I had lots of fun with this one. I must say, I really like using the palette knife. It's such a versatile tool and it's also so expressive. Please let me know what you thought of this one in the comments and consider checking out my Patreon if you're looking for more content. I'm actually going to be taking a week off next week to have a bit of a rest from YouTube and painting. So there won't be any video next week, but I will see you all in the week after for the premiere of my newest piece. It's actually one of the biggest swipes I've ever done and something else that's really exciting. See you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.